Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the common mistakes that I see being made in Halo Wars 2 and how to correct them. And instead of calling out every single mistake, I'm instead going to give you, I guess, really seven tips. And I'm kind of building upon Pyman's rules of Halo Wars 2. And I have seven rules here, not all inclusive, by the way, there are probably more rules that could be thought of and added to this list. But these are the most common mistakes I see in Halo Wars 2. The last housekeeping item is, is this is going to absolutely upset all of the pro players, and there's nothing I find more cheddarful than that, so shout out to them as well. Okay, Pyman's rule number one, upgrade your pads. What I mean by this is if you're building harvesters, supply pads, extractors, or generators, whatever economy building you have, make sure you upgrade it. Now, you don't need to do this immediately, for example, upgrading your pads, uh, particularly your supply pads in tech one it's not really the best use of your resources unless you're someone maybe like forge where you can do it for cheaper but uh you don't really want to upgrade your supply pads tech one but nonetheless you still want to upgrade all of your pads eventually especially your power gen generating ones that's including your your generators and your extractors out there you want to upgrade those as soon as you can because you just get a better return on your investment and you'll get a return faster and be able to obviously increase the amount of resources that you get in a certain amount of time. In the same vein, this kind of ties in directly to Pyman's rule number two, take your minis. I can't tell you how many times I play Halo Wars 2 and I don't see people go for their mini bases uh, at all. I, I do think, you know, depending on what build you want to have at the start of a match, because it's some of your builds can be map dependent, you don't necessarily want to go for your minis right away. Uh, you know, maybe even, say, Sentry, the mini in the corner. Don't even know if that's necessary immediately once the game starts. But I think in other matches, you want to take the mini pretty quickly. Eventually, yes, you want to take all of your minis, but kind of... Leaning back into Pyman's rule number one, don't put a gen on a mini, please. It immediately goes in the cringe compilation. There's really only one leader while I will allow this to happen, and that's Sergeant Johnson. Once he gets the digging in deep upgrade, that allows him to build buildings for free. So yes, if you're Johnson and you have digging in deep, I actually expect you to have gens on your minis because, again, you get your power for free. Pyman's rule number three, don't expo tech one. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, but I really don't think that uh, for most players, building an expansion-based tech one makes a whole lot of sense. Of course, yes, there are other leaders in the game, like Atriox, when you get fortifications, you can expo early. But no, I don't think expoing tech one, by and large, is in the best interest. Why? Well, you spend a lot of supplies and power building that expansion base, and it leaves your entire economy exposed, really, because now you've spent all of your money building this expansion base. You don't have any military units to defend, one, uh, your main base, or two, your expo base. And it leaves you delayed into Tech 2. So if someone scouts you, uh, you know, and determines that you have an expo Tech 1, that's pretty clear indication that they're going to push if they can put two and two together. So don't take an expo Tech 1 with rare exception. And I had just mentioned uh, Pyman's rule number four, scout your opponent, find out what they're doing, build some jackrabbits, choppers, whatever, even using uh, different types of units to scout your opponent, at least have an idea of what they're doing so you can kind of be better prepared. If you see a bunch of air pads, well, maybe you should build combat tech marines or something to be prepared to counter them. You don't want to be surprised, but with your opponent's doing right off the bat. Okay, Pyman's rule number five, take the nodes. I know that the Marines and the Gurns are stupid and they don't like taking the nodes, but yes, the power nodes are very important. You may not get a ton of power from your power nodes per se, but if you take four or five of them, that certainly adds up. And of course, the line of sight is definitely important as well. Of course, there's not going to be any sort of indication that your opponent has gone through the line of sight of a node, but if you're looking at your minimap, you can see what they're doing, and you'll be notified when they try to take the node back. Pyman's rule number six, and this one I think isn't Pyman's rule, I think I just added this on the list here, is when you build an expansion base, make sure you automatically expand that base once it's done being constructed. So 
what I mean by that is, is as soon as your base is, uh, your expansion base is fully done being built, you're going to have three pads available to you and you can upgrade that base for a few hundred power to add some more pads. You want to do that right away. The reason being is because by doing this, it gives you time to build your other pads and, you know, there's really no holdup. You can't build those three pads by the time that that research upgrade has been completed. Also, that allows you to build turrets once you get the first expansion upgrade for your base. Uh, so it's just all around better to automatically expand your base uh, when you do it. If you think you're, if your expo's under attack after it's being built, uh, go ahead and research that upgrade anyway. And this may sound, uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hear me out. If you, def if you defeat that attacking force, well, you're still going to be able to expand the base. If you think you're going to lose the base, you can always cancel the upgrade and get all of your resources back right before your base is destroyed. Pyman's rule number seven, I think it is, is the number I might be losing count, is split your units. What I mean by this is if someone drops a beam, is probably the biggest leader power where you should split. Uh, if, if you see the windup, you know, the reticule of the beam that's about to be placed on your units, go ahead and start moving your units in various directions. I know it's easier said than done, and it takes a lot of time to get good at splitting. I sometimes aren't that good myself. Sometimes I am, kind of depends on the situation. But splitting your units minimizes the damage done by being beamed. You'll be surprised. Sometimes entire matches can be won or lost by dropping a single beam. You know, there's other powers too, like the cryo and seismic you can split. Um, and, you know, maybe you don't want to split, but you want to use some other powers like counter it with a teleport, use Aatrox's bulwark, you know, so on and so forth. You can get yourself out of situations like these. Don't just sit in leader powers and lose all of your units. Uh, that's not that's not the intended design of that of that battle, if you will. Uh, finally, the last point I have is air isn't OP until it is. What I mean by this is if someone is in tech two and is, you know, making a couple of hornets or a couple of banshees, whatever the case is, that's pretty easily counterable, if you will. You can counter that force with not a whole lot of effort. But let's say you're tech three 40 minutes into the game and Decimus has all of his upgrades Boundless Siphon, Boundless Fury, Air 3, Full Pop Banshees, that's 40 Banshees, you're not going to have a good time. It's going to be very difficult for you to stop that, even with the addition of all of your leader powers and unit upgrades. So, and as we know, Vultures are absolutely brutal late game, especially when they're shown in mass. They can absolutely just destroy bases with uh, the Y ability of uh, just a pack of vultures. So make sure that, you know, don't let the game drag on to where air can be completely overpowered. Again, that's also easier said than done. There's a lot of situations where we've had to deal with the cringe air. Just don't let the air become cringe, no matter on what side you are. Don't fall into cringe air. And I, I think winning by cringe air is, uh, you know, just not all that uh, exciting, if you will. So there you have it. That is the most common mistakes that I see being made in Halo Wars 2. What are the most common mistakes you see being made in Halo Wars 2? Post your, your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm losing my ability to speak as this video goes on. And what's the most cringe thing that you see? I think if you're on the Halo Wars 2 subreddit, it's the existence of Team Respawn. Because when I make videos like these, it, it winds all of the pro players up, which is hilarious in its own right. Uh, there is a playlist, speaking of cringe, of all of the Halo Wars 2 strategy guides that I have made. Seldomly add videos to that playlist these days, but you never know if I'll make more videos in the future for that. And if this is your first time on the channel, well, we inexplicably are still posting Halo Wars 2 almost daily, and we're having a blast doing it, so be sure to check that out on the channel. Okay, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you, James.